Good morning, one and all physics students. I hope you're having a great morning this morning. The sun is shining, uh, and it is Wednesday. Uh, today, we are looking at our last combination circuit, guys. So I know this is a little bit confusing, this section, but uh, with enough practice, we've built it enough time, you guys should be able to work through the examples and come up with uh, your own examples by just changing some of the numbers around. And remember, uh, some of the things that are going to help you along. Like, for example, when current goes into a junction and splits, the sum of those splits has to equal what came into the junction. And uh, if it's all series, the voltage drops must add to the total. So some of these things can really help. But we'll be doing our last combination circuit today. I will be doing a slight review a little bit tomorrow. Uh, I was going to jump into magnetism, but I might pull off on that. I want to give you guys a chance to see the Bozeman version of circuits. It's pretty good. And allow you to do some of your lab work in terms of circuits, uh, in terms of the FET, that Colorado program. It's really great stuff. So if you guys can get a chance to finish that up, and we'll do our big Google form on Friday, of course. That will help out a lot. Okay, guys, so uh, make sure you get to your Google Meets if you're having questions or you just want to check in uh, some of those uh, maybe previous questions, answers to previous questions, or you just want to check on some of the homework stuff. I've been trying to blend the homework questions into our Google Forms as we go, so hopefully you're finding that uh, very uh, appropriate. Okay, so let's take our last Google, I'm sorry, our last combination circuit right now. Hey okay, guys, this one's just a little bit different. I want to just highlight a couple things. We have a 9 volt supply. We are going to have some total current running out of that battery. So that's what the battery will output. I'm going to draw that in green and label it I total. I encourage you to do this on all of your drawings. We know the current is going to split at this point. Some of the current is going across R1 and some of the current is going through R2. But ask yourself this question. If the current goes through R2, does it necessarily have to go through R3 and R4, or just one or the other? Have a little think about that. My friends, one of the things that we probably should make sure we mention, when you're doing resistor reduction, when you're redrawing the circuit, you want to find a place to work that is farthest away from the battery as possible. Because uh, you need to determine the fact that these two resistors, R3 and R4, they are 6 ohms and 6 ohms, the combination of those two resistors is in series with R2. So you can't evaluate this resistor and then go to these two. These two have to be done first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a redraw, and I may have to redraw more than one time. So, I'm going to draw this again. And all I did in this drawing, I'm going to keep the 2 ohm right here. I'm going to keep this 3 ohm, but I'm evaluating the 6 and the 6. The 6 and the 6 are in parallel. Therefore, 6 times 6 over 6 plus 6. Now, you guys may have already figured this out. When you have two resistors in parallel, and they're the exact same value, the equivalent resistance is always half of the value of the resistors. 36 divided by 12 is 3. So my new drawing looks like this. A 2 ohm, a 3 ohm, and a 3 ohm, which are now in series. And then that combination is in parallel with the 2. That's a little bit confusing. Let's draw it again. Down below. That's my 2 ohm. 
Now I'm going six on. And the whole thing is nine balls. Now, now, guys, that looks like it's all parallel. All parallel. So we had our initial drawing. We redrew once to condense the three ohms in parallel, working as far away from the battery as possible. Then that parallel section is in series with R2. So the three and the three are in series. Remember when the resistors are in series, we simply add them together. That's why it becomes a six ohm down here. Now we can draw that total current that we had before out of the nine and into the junctions. So if we have a two and a six, how much current is each one getting? Remember, our rules from parallel. We can apply Ohm's law individually. So we've got the purple there, and we've got a blue right down here. So those are two different currents, and we're going to apply Ohm's law differently to find them. If you look at our five unknowns up here, Originally, it said we want the REQ of 3-4. Well, we've already found that. We condensed those to make a, a 3 ohm. So I've got 3 ohms, uh, which is the equivalent of resistor 3 and 4. Now, what is the total resistance? I actually have a 2 and a 6 in parallel down here. So I could reduce that one more time. A 2 and a 6 in parallel. 2 times 6 over 2 plus 6. That's 12 over 8. So my total resistance should be 1.5 ohms. Okay, guys, what's my total current here? Total current, finding Ohm's law, I have total resistance of 1.5. I just need to divide 9 volts by 1.5 ohms. And we're going to get 6. 6 amps, so 9 volts divided by 1.5 ohms gives me 6 amps. So I've got a total current there. Now that was the green current. I should have done that green here. 6 amps right there. 6 amps right down here. And of course in this drawing, 6 amps right there. Before the first split, it's always going to be 6 amps. Now, what's the voltage across R2 and R3? That's a little bit more challenging because I've got to go back to this drawing to find the voltage across both these two resistors. And if it's going to be 9 volts from this point to this point, 9 volts is going to split. Hmm. Now, those two resistors are 6 ohms in this drawing. So, this is an all parallel. If it's all parallel, we have the same voltage across both branches, 9 volts. So what's the blue current here? That blue current is simply going to be 9 volts divided by 6 ohms. So it's 1.5 amps because that's the resistance of just that branch. So my blue current is 1.5 amps. <clears throat> so it means we have 6 out of the battery, 1.5 in the lower branch. That means that there's 4.5 in the upper branch. Purple. Because remember, they have to add to the total. So I've got a 4.5 amp branch and a 1.5 amp branch. But I'm not asking for the current through this. I just know that it's 4.5. And once I know that this bottom branch is 6, it's 6 in both drawings. So down here, those are combined together because they're in series. But it's still 6 amps through here because that's still the same type of one path drawing. Now this drawing up here would mean that there's 1.5 right there. 1.5, and it splits again from 1.5. This time it splits into two equal resistors of 6 and 6. Well, therefore, guys, 
she has 0.75 amps in both cases because it's going to split equally. But let's go through that a little bit slower to find out what VR2 is. This is R2 right here. We know the current through it. Six amps. So I'm going to draw this as VR2. Oops. Not six amps. We're going to do it right. We're going to draw 1.5 amps. Sorry, guys. 1.5 amps. Not six amps. It's six ohms. All right. So let's do this. I've got 1.5 amps. That's the current that's traveling to, through R2 times its resistor value at 3 ohms. That's 4.5 volts. How about the voltage across resistor 3? Just resistor 3. Well, we had 4.5 across resistor 2. And these two are in parallel together, this one and this one. So they should get the same voltage. So you already used four and a half to get across R2. So how many are left from the original nine? Four and a half. But let's do that with Ohm's Law just to make sure. V sub R3, we want the current that goes through it multiplied by the resistor's value. Well, down here, we determined that was going to be 0 0.75 amps, half of the 1.5 at the split. So 0.75 amps times 6 ohms should give you 4.5 volts. That's kind of tricky, guys. That's about as hard as it gets. So go through that example one more time. How many times did I redraw? I redrew twice. One time condensing the 6 and the 6 in parallel, as far away from the battery as I could work. Then, with that 6 and the 6 and the 3, I combined those two in series to make the circuit all parallel. Remember, our goal with the redraw is trying to get it down to either all parallel or all series. And then you can find that total resistance and total current. Once you have those total values, guys, you can split them up or use Ohm's law as needed. For example, once I had the total values, I could apply to this branch to find out what those currents were. Because I knew I had 9 volts across each branch. 9 volts divided by 2 ohms in the upper branch, 9 volts divided by 6 ohms in the lower branch. Once I have that current down here, I bring it back to my next or my previous redraw. So I'll need you guys to look that over. Tomorrow I'm going to have you guys watch the Bozeman video on circuits. It's also very good. And I'll make sure that these questions for Friday are relatively straightforward. Today I'll be giving you another uh, Google form, a short one, just a few questions on combination circuits to make sure that you've got the idea. I'll try to be broad-based with those questions. Okay, guys, let's keep up the great work. You've been doing a great job. And uh, we'll see each other on the back side of this. One final note, guys. We have that small Google form today. We've got the lab also due this week. And we've got the Google form at the end of the week. Don't forget to the, get to the Google Meets. We can try to handle uh, a pretty good conversation there. Um, Working away from the battery as far as possible. And remember, as a closing note, parallel doesn't mean geometrically parallel. They don't have to be geometrically parallel in resistors. They have to be electrically parallel, meaning they have those different branches that they could go through. A couple extra sources. If you're looking for extra practice, remember the back of the book. Those homework problems at the back of the book, the back chapter, those are pretty good. And if you've got an idea, you can get the Khan Academy for some extra practice there on circuits. All right, guys, good luck, and we'll see you at the Google Meets today.